Let me make one thing clear. OBS is scary. If you opened up OBS and you were like, oh my God, this is too much. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to run now. You're super valid. You're not alone. All of us went through this. So my goal for you by the end of this video is that you will feel comfortable clicking start streaming from a technology standpoint, at least that you won't feel super overwhelmed and intimidated by the OBS interface. So let's talk through not just OBS, but also all of the other little software and assets pieces that make up streaming, right? How do you set up your scenes and your widgets and your alerts and all of those like cool sounds and things that just like trigger on streams all the time? How do people do that? that we'll talk about it here. Now there's no way we're going to cover everything about streaming in a simple like 10 ish minute video, right? So I'm going to keep it at a pretty high level and pretty much on the software side. So software assets, tools, uh, tips on things like setting up your chat bots, moderating your chat, scheduling your streams, graphics, and things like that. We're also not going to be covering any of my hardware in this video. So that includes the webcam, my microphone, my lighting, my sound treatment, my PC build, my face tracking software and hardware for VTubing, for example, none of that is happening in this video. We'll do it in a follow-up instead. Um, so stay tuned for that if that is the part that you are interested in. I will make one exception, however, for the newest addition to my hardware setup, which is the Asus ROG Flow X13. Asus is the sponsor of this video and they sent me not just this laptop, but also the XG Mobile to try out. I've been using an old hand-me-down gaming laptop to record vocals from the closet or the occasional cooking stream from the kitchen, uh, but the battery's dead, the trackpad died also, and it's just, I've needed to replace it for a little while. So I was actually eyeing the Asus ROG line in my options and it was kind of a miracle when they reached out just in the nick of time i don't know what it is with sponsors reaching me like right as i'm looking into them but that's been like a trend that's been happening anyways i've been using this little guy for about two days now and so far i'm really impressed like it's obviously very compact portable great battery life that's really important it has a pantone validated touchscreen, just like super color accurate display which i've been really impressed by and so far it just really checks all the boxes for a creator like me who's constantly on the go it also has a touch screen and it rotates 360 degrees to go into like tablet mode. So my ADHD self is very happy being able to contort myself into any position, whether I'm lying on the ground or like just in a you know, weird, I don't know, shrimp position and still be able to use this laptop from literally any angle. And I know I keep calling it really teeny, but don't underestimate its processing power, especially with the ROG XG Mobile, which Asus also sent me. It really adds extra power and extra ports for all of your gaming, multimedia editing, rendering, etc. needs. So laptops often aren't the easiest thing to upgrade and it's a really exciting way to get truly stunning performance out of just a little, little baby laptop. <laughs> As promised, we'll talk about the rest of my hardware setup in a later video, so we'll just cut this off here, take it as a little teaser. Thank you again to Asus for sponsoring this video and let us carry on. First off, we're already in OBS. Let's talk about how you can organize your OBS layout so that it's not super overwhelming and talk through what each of the components actually means here. I'm not gonna go super in depth, but we'll go over all of the components that you're already seeing on screen in front of you. And then part two, we'll go into assets. So that includes things like stream overlays, widgets, like when you're on someone's stream and you see something go like so, so followed or like so-and-so subscribed or like a little dono bar that fills up as people put tips in, right? How do those work? Where do they come from? How do you connect them? Let's spend a little section on just those integrations and overlays. And then the third part is around planning and logistics and tooling. So we'll talk about chatbots, for example, or ways that you can use stream scheduling to organize your streams um, and where you can share the stream schedule so that people know when you will be streaming. So it's kind of a quick three-part overview. Let's get into the OBS side of things, yeah? For those of you who don't know, OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It is an open source program that pretty much all of us use when it comes to YouTube and Twitch. There's a lot going on, right? But the important thing to know is that all of these things, these docs, these are called docs, they can all be undocked into little windows, right? So I can pull my little Twitch stats out over here if I want to, or I can pop it right back in. Um, and I usually like to, I'll, I'll mess with it depending on what my stream is and how I need things set up. But usually this is more or less how I have my layout. I like to have my chat floating because I move it around a lot. The activity feed really has to be first and foremost because this is where your like follows and your redeems come in. And then I also have the stream information over here if I need to do a quick category change, for example, if I'm switching games or if I need to change my title according to whatever the topic has shifted to on stream. So that's a quick overview of, of these this corner, right? Down here is I think where a lot of the chaos happens actually. So we have scenes and we have sources. Scenes are, and again, I'm recording in OBS, so it's like I'm streaming. Let me show you what a scene change looks like, right? So I'm gonna go into starting soon mode 
And you can see that my starting soon screen has a little timer. Um, I'll have a link to an, uh, a guide on how you can get a similar timer set up if you'd like one. Um, but basically you can think of it as just like different screens that you show people. I often will call them screens instead of scenes because that's how they work in my head. You basically have all of your different, you know, assets and stuff compiled together, put them all in one place. You have it all set up and ready to go. And then when you need to switch modes, like if I'm going to just chatting mode, this is my just chatting mode, just chatting. You can see like a little chat thing pop up. <laughs> this is my just chatting mode. And if I want to go from just chatting mode into my content sharing mode, then I can just click the scene and switch over just like that. The scenes then are composed of individual sources. There are lots of different kinds of sources. If I click plus here, it's a really long list. It's actually getting cut off here, but you can see there's like audio, browser, color source, display captures, etc. So basically when you're setting up a scene, all you're doing is loading in a bunch of different sources. So for me, that's like a webcam, a display capture, and then, you know, that's this kind of, this kind of it actually for me, usually. The way you compose and arrange the sources is then what forms your scene. So having those obviously preset is going to make your life a lot easier <laughs> because most of us just have a few different modes that we, we stream in. Um, so for me, it's basically just chatting and then my content mode. Two quick tips for your scenes and your sources. The first is that scenes can also get a little bit overwhelming. You can see that my list here is pretty long. So I have them subdivided into sections by using fake like empty scenes. The dividers help me chunk up my scenes so that it's not, I don't get really lost when I'm scrolling through these looking for the thing I'm supposed to switch to. It just decreases my chances of like clicking the wrong scene. And it's the easiest way for me to stay organized and know which scenes are for what purposes. Over here on the sources side, I've done something really similar with my color coding. Color coding your sources is very easy. It's just just right click, set color, and then choose whatever color you want. It's very, very straightforward. And then we have two more big panels over here that are important. One is controls and one is audio mixer. You can see I'm actively recording right now because I'm using OBS to record. And my mic is lighting up every time I talk on the audio mixer. So I can visit, visually see how loud things are and whether or not I should be decreasing my volume, um, lowering the mic sensitivity, etc. So even if you don't have a monitor on, you can visually tell in your audio mixer whether your audio is okay or not. I think my main lesson actually on the OBS side is that you really want to be recording yourself and doing tests. Check your own recording, check your audio levels, check whether the sources are like weirdly off center, they're not positioned the way you want them to. I actually advise most streamers to spend 10 to 20 minutes at least before you click go live to just test your setup because things move right in between streams. Maybe you've unplugged your webcam and now all the settings are like freaking out or whatever. Like you want to know before you go live that things need to be adjusted and just recording on OBS for a little bit, doing a quick audio check. That's how you reduce scuff during your actual streams. My one last point before we move on from the OBS section is about audio filters. So a lot of people have issues getting their audio clean, um, doing noise gates, compression, etc. Loudness issues are really common. All of that magic happens right here in the filters menu. So you can see that I have a lot of audio filters set up, but most of them are actually disabled. My most important ones for me personally are the compressor and the limiter. I have a lot of volume variation issues when I'm live on stream in that I go from like a whisper to like screaming within 30 seconds, right? And the compressor basically, to put it very, very simply, helps me level out those differences so that even my whisper can still be actually pretty audible. Or even if I'm yelling, it doesn't like super peek out the mic, right? Like it, it does kind of, I need to work on my compressor and my limiter setup a little bit, but they are currently keyed to try and minimize too much distortion, too much quietness, just control the volume a little bit and keep it within a certain range. Long story short, audio could be its own video all on its own. It's like, it needs its own deep dive. So if, if audio is your concern, definitely look up videos that are dedicated to just audio. You will learn a lot about how noise filtering works and so, and all of your different options in that realm. So that was a really quick high level flyby of what OBS is and how it functions. Again, if you need a deep dive on things like source filters, audio filters, video filters, right? Like definitely look up videos just for those because each of those could be their own video. It gets really complicated really quickly, but my goal today is to get you set up at the most basic level so you can start streaming. Even if it, the quality isn't the most refined, right? Honing your stream setup takes a lot of time and iteration. You will get there. Be patient with yourself. So let's talk now about assets overlays, beautifying your stream, right? How do you get these overlays? For example, my just chatting overlay that I have over here with these beautiful chat boxes that appear when people say things, say something I'm giving up on you. It's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. This is not out of the box, right? This does not come packaged with your OBS. So how do these integrations, this beautiful dono bar I have over here, how do we get those into OBS? How do these kinds of integrations work? Let's head over at this point to stream elements. 
Stream Elements is one of two of the most popular options when it comes to things like overlays and widgets. Um, stream, stream Elements is one of them, Stream Labs is the other, and we will look at both of them, but let's start in Stream Elements, okay? So right now you're looking at my Stream Elements dashboard. It looks kind of empty because I kind of use a combination of Stream Elements and Stream Labs at the moment. So I'm kind of switching between them, trying to figure it out. But the main thing I want to show you all here is actually over here under Streaming Tools, you have an overlays gallery and my overlays. If you go into overlays gallery, you'll see that they actually have a lot of really cool overlays that are just like ready made. I haven't really explored it, but like, look at how cute this is. And it's it's ready to go just out of the box. You can have this overlay if you would like. Um, you can also go ahead and you can see they have a button actually with Fiverr. You can go over to Fiverr, commission people to do one for you. Or even if you go on Etsy, there are a lot of people selling their pre-made overlays and they are very beautiful. So do check them out. Um, I think especially when you're getting started out, you don't really want to immediately invest like a whole bunch of money because you don't even know necessarily if streaming is the right thing for you, right? Or if you want to do it seriously or consistently or whatever it is, you're just testing things out. You're just learning as you go. I would highly recommend that you don't over invest in the very beginning. Just get your feet wet, see how you feel about things before you fully commit. Most people though, in my experience, do like to do it themselves. That's where you go into my overlays right here. And you can see, I still have my old deprecated overlays here, but my, my main two modes, as I mentioned earlier, is I have a just chatting mode and then I have my content mode. And right now we're kind of in my content mode. So let me show you all how I did that on stream elements. Actually over here is my old just chatting layout. Let's click edit. You can see all these layers over here, right? This image in the back is a thing that I designed first in Google slides actually. <laughs> so I currently have it set to be a little bit invisible, um, but this is how it actually used to look. So I would, I would put my VTuber over here, or if I was in webcam mode, it would take over the entire background. And here is how it was set up in Google slides. So I have a whole video dedicated to how you do graphic design on Google slides for your stream overlays. I will link it in the description in our resources list, but basically all it is is like literally a background image, some like text. It's really simple, but it looks pretty clean and it definitely functioned for like like half a year for the time that I was using it, it was working fine. So I designed it here in Google Slides, exported it, and then I uploaded it into Stream Elements over here so I could get a sense of where I needed to place my widgets over it. Over here, this thing that I'm moving right now, that is the alert box. You can go into the settings over here and see what alerts you have enabled. So if someone were to give you a tip, for example, you can emulate one, test it out, see what it looks like. Let's say I got a $10 tip, there you go. My audio is playing as well. That's my little tip sound alert. Um, and that Howdy, is all set up. My name is Bill. Sorry, I forgot I had TTS as well. TTS is text to speech. Um, this is my tips alert. Tofi did my stream alert sound over here that I have uploaded. So you can see that it's all like very highly customizable. This over here is my chat widget. So actually if I type something in chat, hello, it should show up right here. <laughs> There it is. Hello. So it's much simpler than my chat currently is nowadays, but um, this obviously did the job. All it is is like a big rectangular widget. There are some settings around how you want to, uh, maybe you want to change the font or the colors or the size, etc. All of it is customizable right here. So obviously within these menus, there's a little bit of a limit to how much you can customize. If you really want like super fancy chat boxes, like the ones I showed you earlier, those will have to be custom coded. Your JavaScript, HTML, CSS has to be custom done, right? And both both Stream Labs and Stream Elements will support that. But if you want to be doing this on your own, maybe you're not a coder, this is the easiest way to go. There are some limitations, but you can definitely get very, very functional overlays on your own without paying a dime. Absolutely. The main thing to take away here is actually that I have all of these widgets in one source. What I mean by that is once I have all of these widgets set up here on Stream Elements, right? How I get this into OBS is I click over here, copy overlay URL, and then I would go into OBS and add it as a source. So you would click plus and then click browser. I I'm going to replace this URL with the one that we copied from stream elements just now. But before I do that, let me change the width and the height. So I want it to be 1920 by 1080 because it's the full dimensions of my of my scene. And then I'm going to change the URL. Do not show people your browser source URLs, y'all. It is dangerous. Don't do it. So I'm going to hide this from you all to put it in. So it depends on your situation, but the way I have things set up is that they're more modular. They break into little pieces. So I have the widget it's kind of in their like floating places on stream elements. And then I set up a little image asset that I import as an image source like this. I have a webcam source and then I have an image source for these boxes. 
And then I have a browser source for the widgets on top. So that's showing me the names over here as well as the chat messages and my sub goal over here. That's three different sources that are composing this scene. Um, and that is one way that you can organize things if you're using stream elements, that's one way to do it. Next up, we have Streamlabs. Streamlabs is a little bit contentious. Um, they have been under fire for some of their branding related decisions, but they do have a bunch of widgets that are actually quite useful. So right here, you can see all of my stats, <laughs> kind of exposing myself a little bit. Um, we'll go into now the, the widgets, which are the essentials over here. So you have the all widgets menu. You can take a look and browse at all the things they have. Streamlabs, similar to Stream Elements, has a lot of pre-made widgets, stylized widgets that you can use, whether that's chat or your alert boxes. I went straight into the alert box and did some customizations here. Uh, all the alert box is, right, is like the so-and-so has followed image that shows up. So let's, let's show you, uh, let me show you what my follow looks like. That's a follow alert for me. I also have a subscription, which comes with audio. And then I have, uh, let's do a test donation. There we go. <laughs> so you can tell that I have lots of uh, customizations for the audio, the text to speech. This is a test donation for $41. That's the text to speech um, and the image. So that's what you would customize over here in your alert box. I do currently have Streamlabs set up um, because my custom widgets are all built on Streamlabs. Before we go into my custom widgets though, let's talk about how you would use Streamlabs widgets instead of Stream Elements widgets. Unlike the way I did it in Stream Elements where you had one scene with all of the, all of the different widgets kind of all into one thing and you just had the one browser source you had to add to OBS. With Streamlabs, it's much more piecemeal. So if I were to go into all widgets and search for chat, for example, here is my chat box widget. Um, again, I'm not gonna show you all the URL, but this is where you would click to copy it. And um, you would then one by one add these browser sources in to your sources menu on OBS. You can see how that would get a little messy and overwhelming. But again, you can, you know, OBS side, there are things to organize that. You can use folders and collapse them together. Um, but that is how you would do it on Streamlabs because all of the widgets are standalone. They don't really have a way for you to compose them together into one browser source that you can then import into OBS. What you see here is my custom chat. This is something that was coded for me by Freeref, um, specifically Wonder Penguin and Soul. And I will put their information in the description as well. I'm not going to show you the actual code very much. We'll just look at the, we'll peek at the top of it, right? But you can see that there's like custom HTML, CSS, and JavaScript happening over here. So this is basically the area in which if you had customized code, this is where it would go on Streamlabs. And that is the code that is currently powering this beautiful chat box that we have over here. And the key takeaway for the Streamlabs and Stream Elements widgets portion of all of this is that you should just experiment. It's a little bit of a learning curve. Just watching me do this is like probably not going to be enough to help you understand it like end to end. So definitely like experiment, try both of them, see which one feels more natural to you, which one feels more like a hassle or less like a hassle. Do you prefer it all in one or do you want them in separate pieces? Um, sometimes different things serve different purposes. Just remember that like the two running simultaneously can get really confusing. And I would personally recommend choosing one and just sticking with it. And if you ever do decide to switch, to switch all of your widgets over at the same time, because otherwise you're gonna get some weirdnesses like double alerts triggering or like the audio doubling, for example. That's, that's the main thing is experiment and then commit to one of them instead of using both. We have arrived at part three, which is about planning, logistics, and tooling, including chatbots. And we'll start with the chatbots because they are just the most useful. Everyone needs a chatbot. Um, the ones that you will see around the most are Stream Elements and Nightbot. So we're here on Stream Elements again. We just finished talking about their widgets, right? Now let's talk about their chatbot. Over here on the left nav, you can see it, chat commands. Before we go into how to customize commands, etc., though, what even is a chatbot, right? So you see them appear once or twice, once in a while in chat, right? They'll, they're little commands that that chat can use, commands that mods can use. A chatbot is just a tool basically that you can use in stream to try and either help moderate your content. You can use bots to help answer questions. A really common way that you'll see bots used is that in the stream title, you'll see like exclamation mark recipe, for example, if you were looking at a cooking stream and if you were to type exclamation mark recipe into chat, then the chatbot would respond with a link to the recipe that the streamer is using. That's just an example. Bots have lots of uses. The best way to get ideas for how to best leverage and utilize your bot is to watch other people stream actually. <laughs> so observe how other people have configured their bots. There are entire videos dedicated to this subject as well, but we're just gonna look really quickly at, for example, some of these default commands as well as custom commands and explore these at your own leisure, right? Like see what works for you, set up special commands if you'd like. So now that we've taken a peek at the stream elements bot, let's go ahead and head over to Nightbot. 
Just like with Stream Elements and Streamlabs, you're gonna go ahead and click login, authorize everything, assign your life away, <laughs> and here you have your Nightbot dashboard. So, oh, hey, Corin is our top chatter. Corin's also one of our mods. Love Corin, Stan Corin. And our top command is Stan, because we were doing a big shout out stream <laughs> earlier. So everyone was using the Stan command, um, where if you do exclamation mark Stan and then someone's name or just a name, it'll be like, the bot will respond and be like, Stan Corin, right? If you typed exclamation mark Stan Corin. Just an example of one way you can use a bot to uh, bring some good community vibes, for example. The primary way that our chat likes to use Nightbot is we like to uh, immortalize <laughs> a lot of funny quotes or typos that people have made in chat. We'll, we'll like make a command with the chatter's username. <laughs> in your Nightbot settings, you can also permit your mods to add commands, edit commands, delete commands, etc. So. It's just a very versatile tool, very handy, and it's especially helpful for moderators, I think, because it makes their life easier. So do consider configuring a Nightbot and also setting up some word filters if there are certain words you want to blacklist, for example, to keep your community safe and cultivate just like a healthy chat environment. Something else I've done is set up an FAQ command, which actually links into a Twitter thread. So you can see that if someone uses this command, they will get this link. And if I should take you to this link now, you'll see that it's basically just like a list of common questions that I get. I also have these listed on my Twitch about menu over here. You can see them, there's like an FAQ section over here. And this is like, what microphone do you use? What are your pronouns? What is your keyboard, etc. But a lot of times on mobile, it's really hard to read the about menu. So that's why we also have um, commands to cover a lot of the information that's in there. You can just simplify a lot of Q and A type things because streamers often are subjected to a lot of that. Bots will help alleviate the pressure on that side like a lot. As a fun side note, just because I didn't touch on it earlier in the assets portion of this video, these these are called panels. These are your about panels. And this panel asset, all of these panel assets, they were also made in Google Slides. So <laughs> do consider giving that video a watch. I was told by a lot of people that it was helpful and I hope that it will be helpful to you as well. One last note before we leave chat bots behind, you can also use these bots in Discord actually. So the same commands that work in your Twitch chat or your YouTube chat will also work in your Discord if you integrate your Nightbot to your Discord. Obviously there are some limitations, right? Like emotes don't really transfer one-to-one -one between the two platforms because the uh, annotations you use for them are a little different, but it can be really helpful to have the same commands for the same community in two different places, right? It's it's a really, just a cozy vibe um, and just really helpful overall. I really enjoy having the bot commands. It saves my life every stream. Now let's talk a little bit about stream scheduling and how you can set up a schedule, plan your schedule, share your schedule. Why do people make schedule graphics, right? For me, it's an, it's an accountability system. So I have ADHD. It's a little bit hard for me to, I have to really have structure to my life, otherwise I don't function basically. And the stream schedule is an accountability structure for me so that once I've announced to the world that I am streaming at a certain time on a certain day, I can't back out of it very easily without it feeling really bad to me. You know, like I feel like I've let someone down. So for me, it works. It may not work for everyone, but if this is something that works for you, I do highly recommend you set up a stream schedule. So I used to do these kinds of stream schedule graphics and then share it on Twitter. It was also really helpful for me to do this on Google Slides because right here in the notes section, I could just like sh like put a dump of all of my stream ideas as they were coming to me while I was scheduling because that tended to be like when I'm writing my schedule is when I want to be thinking about oh what are my ideas anyways like what streams do I even want to do so these two things living side by side for a while this was a really handy dandy function for me so there are a lot of limitations to doing your stream schedules like this though because obviously it's very static um, and you have like a time zone issue right like you can see over here it says all times in PDT but like not all of my viewers are in Pacific time Actually, I think most of my viewers are not in Pacific time. And so it's it's a really painful process for them to have to be like, oh, what's 7 p.m. Pacific in my time? Like how many hours ahead or behind me is Ying? It was just a hard time. It was a headache. And so even though this is a very beautiful, aesthetically pleasing way to do it, it's not like the tweets were getting that much attention anyways. Um, so I ended up moving over to Discord. So here over on my Discord, I have a special stream schedule channel just for me to post my stream schedule in. I've appreciated the fact that Discord has an ability for you to do localized time stamps. And so that would make it easier for everyone. Everyone, no matter where you live in the world, they would always be able to know in their time zones when my streams would be. This is what the timestamps look like. Um, and the way, so this big number here, this is called an epic timestamp. Um, it's basically a milliseconds since a certain point in time in history. So it's milliseconds since epic is what it's called. The format that it's encapsulated in designates what format the date will show up as. So the reason that this shows up as specifically like Wednesday, May 4th, year and time, instead of just like 
time, for example, or Wednesday, um, is because it's formatted with this like T colon and then colon F thing at the end. So the easiest way that I have found to generate these timestamps, because obviously it's not something you're gonna get off the top of your head, is to use a tool called Hammer Time. <laughs> Hammer time is super intuitive. You literally just choose your own time zone. In my case, I'm in Pacific time. And then you set the time here based on whatever it would be in your own time zone. So in my case, I usually go live on stream after work at about 7 p.m. And then it generates all of these different formats that you can use. I personally like this long form one where it includes the day of the week. Click copy to kip, clipboard, uh, copy, copy to click, click, clock, copy to... <laughs> This is stupid. A quick copy to clipboard and then go ahead and dump it over in Discord uh, and you're ready to go. This is my current preferred way of doing schedules, but everyone has their own system. Some people don't schedule. Some people just hit go live when they feel like going live and that is also okay. But if scheduling is something that you are interested in doing, then these are just, just two options of many that you have. Um, definitely feel free to get creative with it. I think the most important thing with streaming and content creation in general is that you should just be flexible to your personal needs and interests and things may change over time, right? You should just adapt to those changes and figure out what works for you. It's different for everyone. The last thing I want to show you all around organization as well as scheduling is Notion. <laughs> Y'all already know I'm a Notion fan. I did a whole video just as an introduction to Notion even a few weeks ago that I will also link if this is what speaks to you. Um, but for me, things have gotten a little serious around this content stuff. I have to track deadlines with sponsors, for example, and that will impact my stream schedule in a lot of ways. So I have a stream calendar here that I have actually shared as a Nightbot command. So with Notion, you can share these things as a page. So I can, I can copy this link and put it in a Nightbot command. And so if someone types exclamation mark schedule into Nightbot, they will get a link to this calendar. And so they can see like all of the different streams that I've had before, the streams that I have coming up. I personally do not stream that often. We'll keep stream philosophy and approach to a different video as well. But I think that there's a really important trade-off to be considered between the amount of time you spend streaming and the amount of time that you spend on other channels of content, right? Whether that's YouTube or TikTok or Twitter or wherever it is that you disseminate your content. Generally speaking, um, growth in your stream happens cross-platform nowadays. That's the current meta at least. So for me at least, I think it's important to not just only be streaming all the time because that is not the only way to grow. That's my personal philosophy. We can discuss that in another video. Anyways, my point is that Notion is a really flexible, versatile tool if you are interested in getting organized and being more strategic about your timelines, your calendars, tracking your sponsorships and your deadlines and their payments, right? There's a lot of things to track. And I think it's important to use something, whether that's Notion or something else, to track everything that is happening if you are going to take this whole content creation and streaming thing a little more seriously, right? Maybe that's not right now, maybe that's coming up later, but it's something to look out for in the future. And if you want to just be more intentional about your content. And that's basically it. I have taught you everything I know, young grasshopper. That's not actually true. We're gonna do a few more videos, um, probably one on hardware and then one also on a little bit of that like stream philosophy I was talking about earlier in terms of like, how often should you stream? What kind of content should you stream? Should you be variety or like a niche content creator? What enables growth? How do you get sponsorships? Should I get a manager or sign with an agency? Like these are all really, really big questions to come, right? Um, and you know, if, if this goes well for you, if you really enjoy it, if you get successful, these are questions that you will have to answer. So I will tackle those in upcoming videos. In the meantime, thank you for joining me for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to address them in upcoming videos. If it was helpful for you, please do consider leaving me a like, a subscribe or a comment. I would appreciate that very much. It's really important because I'm trying to go full time on content and the numbers mean a lot to the sponsors, unfortunately. <laughs> Thankfully, we got a fancy sponsor for this one, right? Thanks, Aces. <laughs> Anyways, Aces link is down below as well. Click it, give me the bread. All right, whether it is morning, afternoon, or evening, have a wonderful time of day. I will see you all next stream or next video. Peace.